Good morning. Will the fellow guard please advance the colors? Please join and start. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as the Star Spangled Banner is sung by our concert. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous flight for the ramparts we Bursting in air. Keep through, through the night. Let our flag lie still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave? the Almighty and gracious God, today we celebrate these commencement exercises in the creative, athletic, and academic accomplishments of those who are graduating and moving on to the next chapter of their lives. And so we first thank you for this joy-filled moment. As these graduates move on into our world, now more than ever we entrust them to your care. Remind them you have created them to live inside a big story not a small one, your story, a story of glory, honor, truth, beauty, grace, and love. The story in which your mission to love people, places, and things of life, and to leave the world better than the way they found it, finds its fullest meaning. For all of today's graduates and their families, more than anything, may the measure of their success be bound up in living out a life creating love, hope, and peace. When they see hurt, give them healing hands to heal the world. When they sense confusion, give them wisdom. When they perceive beauty, give them a sense of thankfulness and wonder. When they encounter scarcity, give them a heart and passion to contribute and to serve. For those pursuing higher education, grant them the knowledge that they will need in their chosen fields and the wisdom to apply that knowledge to every facet of life. For those going directly to the workplace, grant a sense of what is right and good and beautiful, especially in the confusing and complex issues they'll face. For those going into military service, may they draw courage and strength from you. May they serve the cause of truth and freedom and the welfare of all humanity with integrity and honor. Wherever the next chapter takes them, give them the character that exceeds their gifts, a humility that exceeds their influence. Above all, give them you, the creator and provider of all goodness. For in your name, together we say, Amen.
Everyone, please be seated. Congratulations to the class of 2020. It is obvious that this year we had to do things in a different way. However, nothing can take away the importance of celebrating your accomplishments today. And I am honored to participate in this virtual graduation celebration as your mayor. I would also like to take a moment to thank and recognize your support system. The parents, teachers, coaches, family, friends, and administrative staff that have contributed to your success. I know that they are all extremely proud of you today. Graduates, this is your moment. This diploma is a testament of your hard work and a reflection of your ability to set and achieve your goals. Your high school graduation is a milestone that symbolizes your passage into adulthood. As you move on to the next chapter of your life, I hope you look back at your time at the Lynn Public Schools with fondness. Be proud of and carry on our tradition of excellence with you wherever you go. Follow the example the City of Lynn has set for all of us. Life has changes for us in the blink of an eye. We do not know what tomorrow might hold for us. An unknown author said, on this road called life, you have to take the good with the bad, smile with the sad, love what you've got, and remember what you had. Always forgive, but never forget. Learn from your mistakes, people change. Things go wrong, but just remember, the ride goes on. You are graduating during difficult and uncertain times. I know you have missed out on many of the traditions of your senior year, but know that this experience you have endured will only make you stronger. Benjamin Franklin said, out of adversity comes opportunity. And I would like you to find the opportunity to lead, make a difference, and create change in the middle of this crisis. Your generation has the power to make a difference. I am inspired by the talent of our graduates, and I have faith that you will all go out there and have a profound impact on the world. In the wise words of Maya Angelou, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. Our city, state, and country have been through very challenging times before, and we have emerged from them stronger with a new generation of leaders who learned from past mistakes and did better. You are that next group of leaders. Be a dreamer and use your voice to make positive change. I want to strongly encourage you to stay civically engaged in the democratic process on the local, state, and the federal level. As, ev as is evident right now, the issues of today directly impact those you love and those that you care about. In the words of President Obama, keep exploring, keep dreaming, keep asking why. Don't settle for what you already know. Never stop believing in the power of your ideas, your imagination, your hard work, to change the world. So as you celebrate today and look forward to tomorrow, remember that no dream is impossible, that each and every one of you has the opportunity to do amazing things with your future and with our future. Congratulations again to the class of 2020. Soon to be graduates, class of 2020, I know, I know, for those of you who were familiar with my face prior to all of this, this look might be a little jarring. You're used to this. Just saying. I digress. I know that we're celebrating this year in a way, quite frankly, that has never happened previously. It's different, but make no mistake, this event is just as momentous, just as meaningful. You're here. You made it and I am so incredibly proud of all of you. We find ourselves in unique and challenging times. I'm pretty sure that you hear the word uncertain in relation to what lies ahead as frequently as I do. I can imagine the kinds of feelings that evokes, especially at a time in your life that's all about the path you've been paving for yourself during your time as Lynn Public School students and where you intend that path to lead. But there's another word I'd like for you to hear louder than the rest as you prepare for the next step in your life and steps beyond. Perseverance. Where there's uncertainty, fear, delay in planned success, it is even more important to persevere. Most important, 
is to know how. While this time is unique, I doubt very much that this is the first time that many of you have had to persevere. And I can say with certainty, it won't be the last. So while I have some last moments with you, allow me a quick one to share with you a lesson that I learned on how to persevere. It was the summer of 2000. I just graduated with a master's degree in education from Harvard University. To make ends meet over the summer, I washed cars at a local rental car place and took a job working at a summer program for at-risk youth in Boston, earning next to nothing but good work helping good kids. I hadn't yet gotten my first teaching job, but I was pretty confident that I would get one by summer's end. I had a plan, and things seemed to be going pretty smoothly. I think we now all know what can happen when things seem to be going pretty well. When you least expect it, your life can shift directions. On a July afternoon, I got a frantic call from my partner. Apparently, an apartment caught fire on the first floor of our building. Not only was our apartment a complete loss, the release of smoke throughout destroyed all of our clothing and all of our furniture. A complete loss. Thankfully, no one was injured, but we were in trouble. Neither one of us had a real job. I was working the summer program and my partner was a full-time law student. We had enough saved for our plan, but not enough for this very unexpected rainy day. Neither one of us had family in the area, nor did we really have family with the means to support us through this kind of thing. At the end of the day, I was homeless. In mid-August, my old apartment was declared safe for return to retrieve belongings. I went back to see if there was anything worthy of salvage. That day had to be 90, 95 degrees and extremely humid. I was hot, generally feeling hopeless and broke. As I was wrapping up, an elderly woman came from across the street and asked if I'd be so kind as to help remove an old countertop in the kitchen from her apartment and then bring it down to the dumpster. Being the size that I am, I was used to being asked such a favor, and I was raised to respond quickly and with a yes in these kinds of situations, to lend a hand to those in need. That's a solid core value in my family. But to be perfectly honest, I was out of favors. No one had done anything for me in my crisis. At that point, I just didn't have it in me to do anything for anyone. I hesitated, and it was clearly visible to the woman. As she turned to walk away, I called after her and told her we would do it. As we carried the countertop out, my partner talked with the elderly woman. As it turned out, she had recently purchased the apartment as an investment and was looking to rent it. My partner shared our story with the woman, and in answer, the woman offered the apartment to us. Even better, she offered it to us at a rate we could afford, knowing full well she could get a lot more than what we could afford. For her, my helping her in that moment was a character check no credit check could diminish. We had a home. I think about the story a lot, and I thought about it again as I think about you. Just as you are poised to set out on your path, forged through your hard work and good character to be met with your own fire right at the start. I wanted to share my story as a reminder to persevere, but not in the sense that we always discuss. My most important moment of perseverance was not the typical one. It was a quiet, private moment where though I may have had every excuse to be inward looking, I let the character and goodness I was raised with which I was raised to persevere. What flowed from that moment led not only to a home and resuming the path that has led me to my presence with you today, it led to the restoration of my faith in the good that people can see in each other. So today, I implore you to persevere, graduates. What I mean the most is don't let the temptation to focus on self win out unless the focus on self is in preparation for serving others. Graduates, identify your beliefs, 
your moral imperative, your desired impact on this world, and cling to them. Allow them to continue to be the foundation for your actions. Persevere in the character and goodness that got you here. Your community and the world will be all that much better because of it. Rest assured you are stronger because of this. Friends, persevere. Congratulations, class of 2020. I wish you the best as you script the next chapters of your life. Thank you. Class of 2020, congratulations on your patience, perseverance, and most importantly, your accomplishments. I realize it's not how you, your family, or anyone else for that matter, wanted to end your high school career. No words I could say will change your anger, your frustration, or your disappointment. However, maybe focusing on that we are all in this together may help minimize some of those feelings. Right now, we are living history. For the rest of your lives, you will think of life as before COVID-19 and after COVID-19. The world will never be the same. How we do things from now on will be different. Not necessarily bad or worse, but different. How we will work, educate, shop, mingle, and communicate will change, some more drastically than others. How we adapt to these changes will be how we are judged. Major changes take strength and courage. So don't be negative over the ever-changing of things, but be positive. As Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England during World War II said, the positive thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. So on behalf of the faculty and the staff of Linguish High School, we all wish that you will see the invisible, feel the intangible, and achieve the impossible. Congratulations and God bless. To my fellow graduates of 2020, I hope that you and your loved ones are safe during these hard times. It has definitely been a rough couple months. I'd like to begin by congratulating all of you for this achievement. The past four years have finally paid off. And although our senior year did not end as we expected, it definitely has been memorable. 2020 will be a year that will not be forgotten. This year alone, we faced a global pandemic. We were introduced to killer bees and we found out that UFOs are real. The list goes on and on. However, these events have only strengthened the class of 2020. As a class, we must work harder than any other before us to overcome these obstacles. In the future, we will look back and know that this crazy year only added to our growth. I wanna end this off with a quote by Dr. Seuss. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. This class of 2020, I wanna thank you all for joining us on this momentous occasion. For many of us, this has been no easy journey. We have had to deal with our own personal losses, challenges, and setbacks, but yet we still made it here today. And that's something to be proud of. Not only did we have to deal with what life throws at each of us individually, but we've all had to deal with the global pandemic that robbed us of the senior year we had pictured so many months ago. I would like to acknowledge our current situation and remind you to do your part in the Black Lives Matter movement and remember that no lives matter until Black Lives Matter. We have had the blessing of living in a diverse, welcoming community with Lynn being a melting pot of cultures. I hope you carry this appreciation to wherever life brings you once you leave Lynn English High School and embark on the journey of the rest of your lives. I would like to thank my mom, my brother, my teachers, and my friends for helping get me where I am today. I would like to also thank them for helping me distinguish wrong versus right in times like these. I hope that we would return to a new normal soon in which we have a society of justice, equality, and most importantly, love. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2020, and I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. I can't wait to see where you guys end up. Once again, thank you. I had always pictured myself giving this speech, beginning with good morning class of 2020. Standing in front of all of my peers, their families, and our one-of-a-kind faculty on the morning of June 5th, I certainly did not imagine reading the speech solely in front of my family of four, my dog Yukis, and a camera that is recording this message for you all. It makes this moment that much more bittersweet. With that being said, greetings, family, faculty, and most importantly, the class of 2020. I plan on keeping this somewhat short and sweet, like our senior year. On September 7th, 2016, we stood in line, boys to the right and girls to the left, to enter a building that at the time many may have feared. 
Whether we knew it or not, that building would become one we would cherish and miss. Freshman year was nerve-wracking. We tried to be our best selves while also trying to be the best students. Freshman year was a year to forge unbreakable bonds that we'd depend upon for the next few years. Sophomore year, we handed the annoying freshman title to our new underclassmen and became more comfortable with high school. Some took on new challenges, like AP classes. Junior year, we stressed over the perfect schedule and extracurricular activities to begin to build a unique resume to stand out for the colleges we'd be applying for for the following year. And some of us also began phase one of senioritis. Then came senior year, our year, the year we've all been waiting for. While our families, teachers, and guidance counselors all stressed over the importance of completing our FAFSA, applying for colleges, and filling out scholarship applications, we knew there were other significant things on the horizon. We had waited for this year to show off the dresses and tuxedos we spent hours looking for, the cars we spent years saving up for, the senior nights during our last home events, and especially senior week. But with every hardship comes a lesson learned. And even though these are the moments we can never get back, we have also gained an essential truth during our extended time away from each other. You never know what you have until it's gone. So class of 2020, I want you to cherish every moment and take every opportunity. I've also come to the conclusion that our class does not crack under pressure. We survive and we thrive. To others, we may simply be remembered as a senior class that graduated online during a pandemic. To each other, we know the long nights we stayed up doing homework together, the low chatter we made while the teachers flipped through PowerPoints to race to lunch, the race to lunch, the championship games we attended, the long nights of dancing and singing at the top of our lungs. I would like to take a moment to thank a few people who have made my high school experience truly special. To my best friend, Raven Rapley, for being my absolute partner in crime and being there for me from every smile to every tear that was shed. To Mr. Scott Fury for being my go-to in any moment of distress, senior and junior year. Without you, I would never become a person who sees the glass as half full. To our amazing class advisors, Mrs. McGarry and Mr. Fogarty, for keeping me on my toes and making my four years as class president smooth and interesting as well as fun. To Mr. Malaya for being the reason to laugh every morning and checking in on me during some rough times and supporting me during my best times. To Rob Smith, although he may not be part of the Lynn English faculty, he taught me the most important part of being a Linner. To be a Linner, you must understand that it will always be all Lynn. We stand together, no matter our school or appearance, as one family. I also want to thank him for handing over the, tro the championship trophy after the Powder Puff game to my role model and brother Frankie, who left a legacy for me to fulfill, and his girlfriend Barry Letts, both for teaching me the ropes of high school and embarrassing me in the hallways my freshman year. And last, but certainly not least, my parents Don and Frank Perry, for being the biggest supporters during any event, for being my backbone throughout this whole experience and putting me on my path to greatness. I am honored to have you as parents. Thank you for all you have done. And I love you both endlessly. And Dad, I know you're waiting for that mic drop. On behalf of the Lynn English High School senior class, I'd like to take I'd like to thank the teachers and guidance counselors for pushing us to strive for greatness. The custodian, nurses and lunch personnel for taking great care of us, the vice principals and Mrs. Shranji for leading our pack to my classmates. As we go forward, and take on our own paths. I want to leave with you the words of Robert Frost. Frost wrote, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that, that has made all the difference. Well, class of 2020, we have certainly taken the path less traveled by, but at this fork in our road, I challenge you to keep pushing forward, to follow your dreams, and to stay true to yourself. 
I wish you all the best of luck. We did it.
think about now? Can we survive it out there? Can we make it somehow? I guess I thought that this would never end And suddenly it's like the women and men Will the past be a shadow that will follow us round? Will these memories fade when I need